So let's see. This lesson is all about the mathematics curriculum conceptual framework. So you can see this one in uh, the DepEd uh, mathematics curriculum. So I'm just going to explain uh, why we have such. So this is uh, the uh, conceptual framework. And we are going to explain and understand each part of the um, conceptual framework. So it's not very clear because it's it's very tiny already. So we'll have to to uh, go through each part. So mathematics is one subject but that pervades life at any age and in any circumstance. Thus, its value goes beyond the classroom and school. Mathematics as a subject, therefore, must be learned comprehensively and with much depth. So I believe also uh, that uh, I, I, I agree with, with uh, what is being mentioned here. So mathematics is a very important uh, subject in life that uh, each person must uh, learn in order to not necessarily survive life, but be able to apply these in our day-to-day -day living. So there are uh, two goals of mathematics. So they're called twin because there are two of them. And you, if you're going to go back to the um, framework, uh, it's seen at the core, at the center. So the critical thinking and problem solving, mathematical problem solving. So it is being defined by Scriven and Paul uh, that it is the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. That's critical thinking. While um, mathematical problem solving, according to Puglia, uh, a very known mathematician, is finding a way around a difficulty around an obstacle and finding a solution to a problem that is unknown. So usually when uh, I encountered these questions in high school, because when you learn math in elementary, you can really see uh, the application. You can uh, see the relevance of the topics in your day-to-day -day living. But when you go higher and you start learning about um, the, the excess, the variables in in grade six, later part of grade six, and now in grade seven, up to the higher levels, you will see that uh, you start to question how how important are these lessons in real life? When do we use x? When do we use y? Why is there a need to look for these uh, variables? So. My answer, which uh, I would always a answer to my students uh, in high school before, and now I'm going to tell you so that you will also know how to answer your future students, that uh, literally the topics that you are learning in high school, not all of you will be able to apply them unless you become a math teacher or you will go to the field of engineering and then you will be able to apply them but for those who will not be going to that path then you will never literally apply them but the skills that you will get from the subject are very much important critical thinking just a simple this decision of your concerns in life whether to, to, to continue studying or not, given that uh, we have pandem the pandemic now and your, your family is struggling financially, you decide whether to continue or not to continue uh, studying.
would it be beneficial if you stop studying and look for your look for work so that you will earn and have uh, you can feed your family or you continue at the same time you struggle of the limitation of your finances how about problem solving there are we, we encounter problems in different forms every every day and it's a way of finding difficulty well, of course uh, when we have problems we are in we we are in a difficult situation and we need to move around uh, go round and round uh, to find ways and means in order to find solutions to our problems you are applying the skills in problem solving finding a solution to the problem that you are facing now Th that skill is very much important so math especially in the higher levels will teach you to become critical thinkers and problem solving problem solvers which are very very important in real life So these are uh, the content areas in the curriculum that's adopted from the framework prepared by MathTed and SEI. So there were changes in, in the curriculum before there was, uh, when I was in high school, I learned, um, I'm, I'm not so familiar with when I was in elementary. I think there's there's only some changes in the structuring uh, introduction of the different topics. But uh, in high school, uh, I learned elementary algebra in, in grades in first year. In second year, we have intermediate algebra. In third year, we have geometry. And in fourth year, we have trigonometry, advanced algebra, and I think there was a calculus that is the the curriculum prior to the K to 12. But this time, the, we focus on the five content areas. We have numbers and number sense, measurement, geometry, patterns and algebra, and probability and statistics. So if you're going to scrutinize closely from grade from kindergarten up to the higher levels you will have all these five content areas that uh, is being reflected so you will see uh, there may be some some, uh, um, some one or two uh, topics that are already when you go higher that's already not there because there's more and the patterns and algebra but more or less these are the, the five content areas that are being um, that are expected to be taught in every grading, in every grade level. So these are the specific skills and processes to be developed. Uh, the definition of each is in your module, so I will not be explaining one by one, or else I will just be reading them. So knowing and understanding, estimating is very, very important. So when you estimate, uh, the, the amount of, of uh, water that you need when you're cooking rice or when you're cooking corn uh, and uh, the amount of sugar that you are going to put in your milo or your your milk uh, or even your coffee or even your sequati computing and solving uh, visualizing modeling modeling visualization and modeling are very very important in um, be able to to understand better the the abstractness of mathematics representing and communicating conjecturing reasoning proving and decision making applying and connecting so these skills are very for me important um, not just of course in mathematics but the, these are these skills are uh, life life skills uh, which we will be able to apply in in life that's why it's called life skills <coughs> next we have the values and attitudes uh, again it's in the module uh, the, the definition of these uh, that need to be honed accuracy of course uh, 
cannot be correct if your answer is wrong. Creativity, being creative in the the the, the solution that you on how you attack the problem, how you solve the problem, objectivity, perseverance. Uh, Math is, is difficult. How are you going to, to, to let the student to, to really continue solving and not stop there? Productivity, being productive in, in your, your uh, dealings with uh, uh, the concepts, in uh, being productive in Worse, making making yourself productive on, on making your students productive uh, as you teach th these lessons. Next, appropriate tools in, in teaching mathematics. So uh, you do not just teach by talking in front of your students. You have you must have something that you need to bring. And now uh, it's already evolving because when we have these um, things being presented, uh, of course there are already some 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 new things. When 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 I was in elementary, I don't think these tools were that important. So manipulative objects. That's very important when you teach. Uh, mathematics you need to have the appropriate manipulative objects the measuring devices especially when you have the measurement uh, calculators and computers are already uh, important so we might be uh, uh, asking the students to solve very very large numbers and we are asking them to do manually so um, what we, we uh, do is we start introducing already calculators, but um, uh, used it as a way of checking if their answers are correct or not. Okay, computers. Uh, for now, we have to learn how to make use of our computers since distance learning is being applied. So, how are we? What kind of? Uh, uh, how do we make use? of the current uh, computers of our students, but not all are also having computers. We have to make sure that we are not having um, discrimination for some students. Maybe smartphones are very much available for uh, most students, but still there are also other students uh, who have who don't have smartphones and some of us also don't some of you don't have smartphones tablets and pcs tablet 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 is different from pc pc is personal computer so um we have to also to consider the kind of students uh capability of the students so maybe uh for some schools like private schools we can expect that uh 90 percent or 95% of the, the, the parents can afford computers, smart, smartphones, and tablets, and even have uh, internet connection and be able to pay them, uh, pay the monthly bill, or be able to have uh, to buy a load for the, for the internet. So again, uh, these are very very important uh, tools, but we ha also have to consider the kind of students, capability of our students to. Uh, if they can have this so uh, getting the uh, getting the the profile of the students are very important so we cannot just say that oh I'll be using smartphones in my class but your students do not even own smartphones so consider these uh, factors not just because it is stated in the curriculum that you are just going to to to, to impose that we should do this no, consider first year learners. Those are very important factors. Next is uh, we define context as local situation, set of conditions. This one I made mention already. This one uh, context refer to the beliefs, environment, language, culture that include traditions and practices as well as the learner's prior knowledge and experiences. Ah, it's very important that which also I observed. Uh, grades one, kindergarten, grade one, grade two, grade three. If you're, if you will be teaching in a, in in depth, and it is being taught in the vernacular. Personally, 
personally that's my my personal opinion it's not uh it's not um according to the department of uh of education personally i don't find it uh relevant to be uh converting changing the the math words into pure bisaya because when they go higher and when we apply them we don't use uh those very deep bisaya words yes it's very important to to go back to to our um our context but there are very difficult for me i find it very difficult to be uh learning Bisaya words and and students are not even the the the, the peoples don't even recognize what are those, and they can un understand better the 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 English. But that is my opinion. Okay, doesn't represent the the opinion of of uh, the bigger uh, community. It's good to be ex uh, exposed, but uh, yeah, still, that's my bias. Uh, traditions practices as well as uh, the learners prior knowledge and experiences ah there there were problems that's one when you create your your uh, lesson plan and you give examples you have to contextualize it in the the according to the 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 environment situation of the learners so you cannot just give examples like crossing the street, seeing traffic lights, when in fact it is not not a single traffic light is found in our locality. So uh, you have to feel the and, and and know the context of your learners. So make sure that you use the, the examples around. You know the 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 context again the context the traditions of your students okay these are very very important